explosive new bestseller. It is called Double Cross, the explosive inside story of the mobster who controlled America. That's quite a, that's quite a subtitle there. Sam, do you think that uh, that can be said of your uncle, that he truly controlled America? Absolutely. He had the kind of influence that was staggering. Uh, we're talking a period in the 1950s, 1960s, and as a matter of fact, the FBI uh, and uh, Robert Kennedy, uh, Attorney General at that time, uh, put him on top of the top hoodlum list of organized crime figures, uh, as well as the FBI uh, said that he really controlled everything from the Mississippi all the way uh, west to the Pacific Ocean. I, I think the most uh, amazing thing in the book is the story of the uh, assassination of Marilyn Monroe. I want to get to that uh, and quickly. Uh, let me just ask you a question. How many lives, how many presidents' lives did your uncle touch? Well, we specifically say that seven presidents uh, in this century were in some way uh, influenced or had, uh, the mob had influence uh, to seven U.S. presidents, back from Calvin Coolidge uh, all the way through uh, um, um, FDR, Truman, uh, obviously uh, Eisenhower and, and Kennedy and uh, into Johnson. So that influence varied in, 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 over time in, in, in its structure. Did your uh, uncle ever meet Judith Exner? Yes, specifically my mother and father uh, were at uh, several occasions uh, in Chicago where uh, uh, Sam brought her uh, to a particular uh, affair. Uh, but uh, we specifically say that Sam knew her, uh, knew her after uh, uh, and had a, had a relationship with her after uh, Jack Kennedy did. So the woman, of course, who it is alleged had an affair with both Sam Giancana and President John Kennedy. In the middle, the lady on our panel, Marita Lorenz. She was Fidel Castro's mistress. More than that, Marita claims that she traveled with the team of assassins that would ultimately murder President Kennedy 29 years ago. This is Marita's first national television interview in a decade. Where have you been? Hiding. Are you frightened? Uh, no, not really. No, not really hiding, surviving. You met Castro, 1959? Yes, February 27th, 1959, in Havana. In Havana. On my father's luxury liner, BMS Berlin. It's a cruise. And he came aboard, and I was uh, 18. Was it love at first sight? I would think so, yes. Infatuation, yes. Did you begin an affair almost immediately? Yes, I went back to New York. He sent a plane for me and I returned, thinking it would be only about two weeks. Turned out to be eight and a half months. And, um... Uh, and you became pregnant with his baby? Yes, I did. I was drugged and uh, returned to the United States and then recruited by the CIA. So the recruitment by the CIA happened in what year? Uh, 59, the end of 59. So everything happened in that one tumultuous right. year? Yes. And the CIA asked you, Marita, to do what? Well, they said, um, we, said we don't like his uniform, we don't like his beard, we think he's turning communist. You have a, his uniform, which was only honorary, you have the key to his bedroom. Would you do this country a great deed? And after much talk, uh, kill him. Why would you want to kill the man who fathered your son? Well, they used a lot of disinformation and brainwashing uh, on me and, uh, you know, documents to say that uh, Castro killed the baby, and which was all untrue. And uh, since I had the key to his bedroom, uh, just to go back, that he was a threat to national security. Let's see that picture again, Jim Bob, the picture of uh, Marita and Fidel back when... That uh, was on board... Better the... times? That was on board your father's boat? Yes, that's the first day I met him. It seems for an 18-year-old you're uh, quite enamored and uh, right. quite aggressive there. Yes. Was... Oh, was he giving you an autograph? No, yes, right. He was or giving the me phone number autograph. to his personal suite? Right. That too? Your son, is he alive? Yes, he is. Living where? In Havana. In you Utah. had a daughter as well, didn't you? Uh, yes, my daughter is by the, my second assignment, another dictator. 
She is alive, well, and married happily today. May I ask which dictator? The second one was General Marco Perez Jimenez, former president of Venezuela. He was in assignment to get funds for the so-called Bay of Pigs invasion. He had and, quite a string of uh, incredible lovers there, didn't he? personal. He said they were going to kill me because I messed up the assignment, killing Fidel. Uh, so he helped me, but... It was also a scandal. I want to get to the assassination of Marilyn Monroe. Before I do, though, I want to know, did you try and kill your lover, Fidel Castro? Uh, well, let's just say I went back through the motions. Uh, they put so much, so, such a heavy burden on me. I was only a kid, really. And uh, How were you I, going to do it? I poisoned him with botulinum toxin capsules. I did go back and one dry run just to see if I could go in and out, which I did. And I came back. And uh, they said to put it in his food, pills. But Fidel uh, has no set time, or he doesn't get up from 9 to 5 and eat at uh, 12, or he eats when he feels like it. His schedule is very busy. But uh, the second time, he asked me, did you come to kill me? I said, yes. And he says... I, uh, yes. What did he do? He just lay there on the bed, smoking a cigar, and said, well... And he reached over, and he had his forty-five over a lamp, and he handed it to me. He said, go ahead. So I took the gun, and um, said, it's too rusty. He said, you can't kill me. Nobody can. And he said, be careful when you go back. They will kill you. So... I just, and I don't think they've forgiven me today for messing up that assignment. I didn't do it, and I returned, and I've gotten hell ever since. Does the name Frank Sturgis ring a bell to Very anybody? well. He was... Remember him? The Watergate, Fiorini, the Watergate guy? A.K.A. Fiorini. He was my, uh, what do they call military advisor. Was he the one that was tell, telling you how to kill Fidel? Yes, among other people also. So Frank Sturgis was, you think, part of the CIA? Absolutely. If he was an assigned agent, he was a contract employee. And, and Frank on the Sturgis, you claim, took you to Dallas. Well, it was after the uh, extradition of Perez Jimenez in August 1663, there was severe aggravated harassment against me. Um, I went back to Sturgis for help. And after speaking to him, he said, well, let's just go do a gun run. I mean, we were running guns. Uh, I thought this was just another gun run to From Texas. Mi Miami From to Miami to Dallas. To Dallas, right. But what bothered me was that they were bringing guns and high-velocity automatics and disguises. To Dallas? To Dallas. And the so date? The two, two, three days before. The assassination? Right. Did he say, we're going to Dallas to kill President Kennedy? He didn't say that. He said it was a top assignment. But in those days, due to the Bay of Pigs' uh, lack of air cover, the, everybody in Miami, especially the anti-Castroids, were extremely vehemently anti Kennedy anti the government for being let down without air cover. And they had their reasons to feel terribly rejected. He didn't say that. It was just a top assignment. A big job a big tomorrow. A big job, a top job. And, uh, you know, I went along thinking I would be used again as a decoy and to pick up weapons, and we go back. All right. But uh, I was, uh, I I was in the way. You were in the way. All right, you'll tell us what happened in Dallas. Go to 1962. Go to Los Angeles. Go to the home of Marilyn Monroe, mm -hmm. the sex goddess of her time. Mm -hmm. Marilyn Monroe was a woman who knew too much, and Marilyn Monroe did not commit suicide. Uh, Marilyn Monroe was murdered. She was murdered as a result of assassins coming from Chicago uh, on orders of Sam Gincana uh, because Sam Gincana took a contract to murder Marilyn Monroe. And the contract was put out by the CIA because Marilyn Monroe 
was a woman who was used by the CIA, Marilyn Monroe, knew that the CIA and Sam Gincana and the mob specifically had been working and collaborating for many, many years through the 1950s, running guns, working in various foreign countries. She knew very well what they were up to. Now you add in the fact that she had a relationship with Jack Kennedy, was having a relationship with Robert Kennedy, and now threatened to blow the lid off the whole thing. She posed a tremendous threat, and as a result, she had to be eliminated. How was she eliminated? Specifically, the assassins gained entry to her house just after Robert Kennedy had left. Uh, she was sedated prior uh, in the day, so uh, she was not in a position to, to struggle. They inserted a doctored Nembatol suppository, uh, which dissolved and rendered her impossible to being revived. They killed her with a suppository? Yes. Uh, a suppository that was heavily doctored with chloral hydrates and barbiturates. It was doctored by a chemist. Uh, from the University of Illinois, uh, a man who uh, Sam had used prior to uh, develop various concoctions. Specifically, uh, we say that he was also involved with the, the concoctions for the Fidel Castro assassination attempt. Sam Gincana, in, in 1960, 62, was a man who had the connections. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a mystery. It, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't unusual. It wasn't a, a freak circumstance that the CIA contracted Sam Giancana to assassinate Fidel Castro. They did because he was the ranking man in organized crime. Well, may I add to that that I did meet him in the Fountain Blue Hotel. Sam Giancana? Sam Giancana, right, in November. And uh, also with uh, Roselli. And, uh, Johnny Roselli, later Johnny assassinated? Johnny Roselli, both of As them. As Sam Giancana was. Uh, right, I know, but I have to dispute that, that they, I do believe that organized crime was definitely involved because they had a motive, gambling in Havana, and, uh... You're talking about the assassination of pre uh, President uh, Kennedy. President Kennedy I don't want to mix apples and oranges. Uh, here he says that his uncle killed Marilyn Monroe by getting a couple of uh, assassins to first sedate her and then oh, give see, her a okay. drug no, nem nembutol suppository. Yeah, but, Who told you that, Sam? That information came uh, from uh, not only my uncle, but also men surrounding my uncle uh, through my father. Uh, these are men who were assassins of Sam Giancana that my father grew up with, knew from the old days as a kid. Uh, my father was associated with uh, these men for many, many years. For 35 years, my father... Was your father a made member of the Mafia? No, he wasn't. Uh, so his brother was, sort of just told him, bragging? My my. my father had a had a continuing relationship with his brother it started when he was a young boy he watched his own brother sam uh murder a man in front of him when he was six years old he learned very quickly of what life was about and learned a lot about his brother and sam really took my father on the side and fair, and protected him my father uh ran deliveries for for his brother he was a man who uh, worked in the gambling rackets he also ran a motel for my uncle and was a man that my, fa my uncle felt comfortable talking to. The FBI doesn't have every conversation that Sam Giancana had throughout his entire life. Uh, number two, Sam Giancana felt that everybody, no one was as smart as he was, uh, no one was as sharp as he was, and he r often, often called people jerks, halfwits. My father had a running feud with him for many, many years, and they talked in private in locales that weren't bugged just like my father had access to assassins. Summarize. Your father killed Marilyn Monroe? No, my uncle, Sam Jinkan. I mean, your uncle, I mean, sorry. He, he took the contract from the CIA to kill Marilyn Monroe. The CIA ordered Marilyn Monroe yes. killed? The CIA was threatened that Marilyn Monroe would reveal the relationship that the CIA had throughout the 1950s and up into the 1960s. Ever meet your uncle? Absolutely. You love him? I hated him. The Mafia, Marilyn, Robert, and John, the focus of this edition of Peralta.